Welcome to Six Sigma Black Belt, Course 6, Module 2, Planning Experiments. The lessons in this module will be dedicated to the planning of our DOE. You will learn that there are considerations both technically as well as strategically. DOE has many useful applications. First, it helps us to assess multiple alternatives through the assignment of levels of each factor. This helps us determine which factors are significant and which are not. Many times we conduct an experiment with a specific target response in mind. We can even find the extrema range of the response variable and establish the settings for each factor to obtain this result. DOE can also help us reduce variation and improve robustness of the system. Our ability to map out multiple responses based on known inputs facilitates our discovery of the system and our ability to control the system. Our selection of a design depends on our objective as well as the number of factors we seek to manage. Even small experiments require a lot of time and effort to plan and execute. Anything like this that is worth doing is worth doing right. There are a number of objectives we consider. The comparative objective is ideal when there are several factors under investigation. Our primary aim is to make a conclusion about whether a factor is significant. The screening objective is used to select or screen out the few important main effects from the many lesser important ones. These screening designs are also termed main effects or fractional factorial designs. In general, resolution three designs are considered to be screening designs. The response surface method objective is designed to let an experimenter estimate interaction effects. It can even uncover Quadratic effects. RSM designs are used to find improved or optimal process settings, troubleshoot process problems, and make a product or process more robust. The mixture objective is used when we are optimizing responses when factors are proportions. This procedure helps us to find the best proportions of factors to maximize or minimize a response. The model fit objective is used when we want to model a response as a mathematical function of a few continuous factors. This is essential in regression. Process variables include both inputs and outputs. We think of inputs as factors and outputs as responses. Selection of factors and responses are best done in a collaborative manner. Some important guidelines we should consider will be making sure we include all important factors and relevant responses. Pick your levels practically, not too conservatively or liberally. We would have no interest in settings that are impractical or impossible. This can give us results that are not feasible. And finally, avoid using responses that combine two or more process measurements. Two-level designs are considered the most popular and useful. Two-level designs are simple and economical. However, it is often desirable to include some center points during the experiment. This would move us to a three-level design where the center point is the middlemost value between the two extremes. Every experiment is different. The points listed here will help you zero in on the best process. First, restate the objective. Learn as much as you can about the process. You will then use your knowledge to, in brainstorming key factors and responses. Do this collaboratively. Draw on experts of the process to help you. Assess the capability of the equipment. 
We want to ensure we are not setting expectations that cannot be met. Next, assign levels to your factors based on the information you have gathered so far. Select a DOE plan. Have someone map out the plan and ask another peer to review and correct as needed. Make sure to run experiments in random order to avoid bias and other sources of error. The black belt should remain on site for the entire experiment and review results regularly to make sure everything is being done as planned. Finally, you can draw conclusions, but recognize that you can verify these results by replicating experiments. There is no magic bullet with design of experiments. It is more common to perform two, three, or more experiments before a complete answer is attained. An iterative approach is usually the most economical. Experimenting a little at a time helps us to obtain a broader picture of the behavior of the system. In all experimentation, one makes assumptions. In design of experiments, we should be concerned about the capability of the measuring system, process stability, and the behavior of the residuals. Before we experiment or improve a process, we should always confirm that it is capable beforehand, during, and after the experiment. Keeping track of the capability can help us localize the cause of strange experimental results. Experimental runs should have control runs intermingled in the experimentation. Make sure to start and stop with a control run. This will help us detect drift or shift during the experiment. Of course, we want a stable process, but if we find the process has become unstable, we must account for this in the analysis of the experiment. We also need the differences between the model predictions and the actual observations to be well behaved. These are the residuals. Residuals are the estimates of experimental error obtained by subtracting the observed response from the predicted response. The predicted response is calculated from the chosen model. After all the unknown model parameters have been estimated from the experimental data, residuals are unexplained sources of variation. We assume the same behaviors for the residuals as we do for the data, such as normality. There are a number of important, softer considerations when running experiments. First, make sure to keep the experiments as simple as possible. Confirm that your plan is feasible. Keep a watchful eye for process drifts and shifts during the run. Steer clear of any unplanned changes. You should also allow some time and material for unexpected events. Before executing your experiment, Make sure to obtain buy-in from all parties involved. Define roles and responsibilities very clearly. Effective ownership should be maintained for each step in the experimental plan. Retain your raw data. You never know when you may need it. Capture details of everything that happens during the experiment. This can give you leads when unexpected results are found. Most importantly, Make sure to return the equipment to its original state when you are done. We never want an experiment to be connected to a lost productivity event in the plant. This will reduce opportunities for future experiments.